Okay, our platelet friends. So remember, these are fragments of cells. They're, they're not even, they're little, they're tiny. They really just have cell membrane, maybe a little bit of cytoplasm, maybe some sarcoplasmic reticulum. They're very tiny. And they are fragments that break off this cell called a megakaryocyte. Uh, and these megakaryocytes, as the name suggests, are gigantic. And they essentially just keep synthesizing these, these platelets. No nuclei, certainly no mitochondria, certainly not much of anything, honestly, except for a lot of proteins found in their plasma membrane and the ability to secrete chemicals. Okay, they can secrete chemicals. Now, because they are nothing like a cell, they only last for five to 10 days, five to nine days, I think I have it another slide five to ten. So let's go ahead and just change this to be consistent. Five to nine, five to ten, yeah, about the same. Okay, plus or minus one day. And they are critical to our ability to form blood clots. They work in partnership with other other chemicals, including fibrinogen and clotting factors, which we'll discuss in the clotting cascade. Now here's the chemicals that they secrete. One of those chemicals, we'll put it in another pretty color, is serotonin. Now serotonin, serotonin, this is so cool. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. It's also, oddly enough, a hormone that is regulatory in the digestive system. And here it is, lo and behold, being involved in blood clotting. And what happens is these platelets release serotonin to trigger vasoconstriction. And we're gonna talk about this process in more detail you should know that platelets exist in our bloodstream in their inactive form. These are the inactive ones. And it's a good thing that they are inactive because otherwise we would be spontaneously forming clots and those clots might break free and go to our brain or our heart or our lungs and those are all problematic. So we don't really want our platelets to activate inappropriately sometimes they do obviously that's how we get blood clots in the first place but inactive platelets float freely in the bloodstream now when they encounter an injured area and in particular they're activated by collagen more on that in a minute these platelets become activated and they become very sticky, 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 and spiky. And they're going to cluster together. And then the fun thing is that they start releasing other molecules, which we're going to talk about in more, more detail later. For right now, I'll just call them platelet factors, which activate more platelets and we'll look into this in a little bit more detail average count like so okay and those are basically your platelets nothing much more to talk about there we're going to talk about them when we talk about blood clotting but i'm not ready to talk about blood clotting yet so